Stoned Immortal archetype originally started out as seven level 10 dark attributed monsters used by the seven dark signers in the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds anime. In the real world, they would be incrementally released in the 2009 sets Raging Battle, Ancient Prophecy, and Stardust Overdrive. What's nutty is that in the anime, the Earthbound Immortal cards were granted to duelists that had died with a great resolve for vengeance. Go Psychic Commander! <laughs> Upon being reborn as a Dark Signer, the immortal who brought them back would mark them with their symbol, and then they themselves would become their new ace card. And fun fact, whenever an Earthbound Immortal monster is summoned in the middle of a duel, it sucks the souls out of all living humans in the nearby vicinity. Come forth, we're a Kotaruska. Check it out, that glow's getting close. <gasps> Whoa, I always saw myself in life, but did but actually become a light? Quick, run for it! Let's be honest. That's pretty messed up, so let's hope that these Earthbound monsters have some pretty powerful effects for such a steep cost. But before we get to those effects, well, who had these Earthbound Immortals? Well, Devak held Kusalu, Griga held Chaku Chalua, Kalin held Koka Paka Apu, Kali held Asila Pisku, Misty held Koka Ria, Roman held Uru, and Rex held Wira Quacha Raska. Look at me, right? The names of these monsters are some of the hardest names I've ever had to try to pronounce. The way I used to say them before was just reading them, how they're written. And apparently that's nothing about how you actually say their names. So I've gone off what the dub is saying, what the dub characters are calling their monsters. And I'm doing my best. It's just so hard to say their names. So those were the Earth and Immortals names. The monster's designs are based on a real-world phenomena known as the Nazca Lines that exist in Peru. The Nazca Lines are geoglyphs that are etched into the desert sands. The way the original Earthbound Immortal cards worked was that they could only ever be summoned if there was a field spell on the field. Also, there could only ever be one of the original Earthbound Immortals on the field at any one time. Because of this, just like in the anime, it's advised to only have one of the original Earthbound Immortals in your deck at a time. Since, if you think about it, if you had seven monsters that only one of them could be summoned at a time, well, you could have a lot of dead cards in your deck or hand. So it's best to just pick one, and whichever one your favorite is, just stick with that. That's kind of cool. You could have seven different Earthbound Immortal decks, each with their own boss monster built in a different way to facilitate the boss monster's effect. I thought it was kind of cool. Anyway, speaking of which, the Immortals, with their steep cost of summoning, are granted some very powerful effects. Aside from their individual unique effects, they have the power to attack directly, while being completely unable to be targeted for attacks themselves. Now, let's be honest, this archetype, barely an archetype when it originally came out. A couple cards, maybe one or two support cards to help the deck out, not that great. That is, however, until fast forward 15 years and brand new support is released for the Earthbound Immortals in the pack Maze of Millennia. These new Earthbound cards were based on a character called Sergei in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 anime. The new cards don't rely on the old cards at all, really. Instead, they focus on fusing and synchroing to make new extra deck forms of the Earthbound monsters. Alongside a whole bunch of new support cards, it has opened up a whole new range of ways to play the cards. And, of course, you can still use the original Earthbounds in the deck if you want to, but I would only pick one of the original seven to put in your deck, and don't put too many of them in. Now, I've been trying not to say new Earthbound Immortal cards, because the new cards aren't Earthbound Immortals. In fact, there are now four different subsections of the Earthbound cards. The Immortal Earthbounds, the Human Earthbounds, the Prisoner Earthbounds, and the Servant Earthbounds. Each of these categories does something a little bit different, but these are just little names that I've given them anyway. So without further ado, let's actually take a look at these individual cards and their unique effects. 
Earths, starting with the Immortal Earthbounds. Now, the original seven Earthbound Immortals all have almost identical effects. They have four shared abilities and one unique ability to them. The effects that they all share is there can only be one Earthbound Immortal monster on the field. If there is no face-up field spell on the field, they destroy themselves. Opponents' monsters cannot target them for attacks, and they can attack directly. Each one of their unique effects are Earthbound Immortal Asila Piscu, unique effect. If this face-up card leaves the field, except by its own effect, destroy as many face-up monsters your opponent controls as possible. And if you do, inflict 800 damage to your opponent for each monster destroyed. Earthbound Immortal Koka Paka Poo. Its unique effect is if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's original attack. Earthbound Immortal Koka Raya. Unique effect if this card is destroyed by a card effect except by its own, destroy all cards on the field. Earthbound Immortal Choku Chalua. Unique effect. Once per turn, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to half this card's defense. This card cannot attack the turn this effect is activated. While this card is in defense, your opponent cannot conduct their battle phase. Earthbound Immortal Kusalu. Unique effect, if this card will be destroyed by battle, you can tribute one of a monster instead, and if you do, halve your opponent's life points. Earthbound Immortal Uru. Unique effect, once per turn, you can tribute one of a monster, target one face-up monster your opponent controls, take control of that target until the end of the turn. Earthbound Immortal Wira Quacha Raska. Unique effect, if this card is normal summoned, target one to three cards you control, but not more than what your opponent has in their hand. Shuffle them into the deck, then discard the same number of random cards from your opponent's hand for as many as possible. And if you do, this card gains 1000 attack for each card discarded by this effect. Moving on next to the Humanoid Earthbounds. Within the archetype, there are two monsters that appear to be references to two Dark Signer brothers, Roman and Rex Goodwin. Hypothetical future support, maybe we can get some more of these Line Walker humanoid monsters that are references to their anime counterparts. So you can get like a Carly Carmine, Dark Signer monster thing, but that's just a theory anyway. Earthbound Line Walker is Roman Goodwin, based on his clothing and appearance. This monster's upgraded form is Greater Line Walker, which is his older brother Rex Goodwin, evidenced by his appearance and of course the glowing golden hand. Which, in itself, if you didn't know in the anime, basically Rex Goodwin transplanted a Sina Dragon arm onto his own arm. It was inside of a case, but they would make the case glow and you didn't know what was inside. It was just the, the Sina Dragon mark. It was actually an arm in there. So I wonder if the glowing arm is a reference to that. Or it just glows, basically. Anyway, Earthbound Linewalker's effect is very simple. Earthbound Immortal Monsters cannot be destroyed by their own effects. Its upgraded form, Earthbound Greater Line Walker, is a bit more complex. Its effect is if you control a Synchro Monster and have a Synchro Monster in your grave, you can special summon this card from your hand. During your main phase, you can add one Earthbound Immortal Monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. If an Earthbound Immortal Monster is normal summoned while this monster is on the field, you can make your opponent's life points 3,000. Get one of the new Earthbound Synchro Monsters onto the field, get this monster to the field somehow, then get the original Earthbound Immortal Monster onto the field. Your opponent's life points drop to 3,000. Hopefully you've summoned one of the 3,000 attack point versions of those monsters. Just attack directly, and you've won. Very hard to pull off, but it's an interesting win condition, I guess. Following on from the human Earthbounds, we have the Prisoner Earthbounds. Earthbound Prisoner Stone Sweeper. If there is a card in a field zone, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can discard this card, add one level free or lower Fiend Tuna Monster from your deck to your hand. Also, you cannot special summon from your extra deck for the rest of this turn, except by Fusion or Synchro Summoning. The two Tuna Monsters that you can add through this effect from your deck are Earthbound Prisoner Groundkeeper. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can special summon one level five or lower Earthbound Monster from your deck or graveyard, except Earthbound Prisoner Groundkeeper. Also, you cannot special summon from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except Fusion or Synchro Monsters. Earthbound Monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects, while there is a card in a field zone. Earthbound Prisoner Linewalker. 
This card is normal or special summoned. You can add one Earthbound Prison or one Harmonic Synchro Fusion from your deck or graveyard to your hand. If you control a level six or higher Earthbound Monster, you can banish this card from your graveyard, target one effect monster your opponent controls that was special summoned from the extra deck, shuffle that face of effect monster into the deck, then your opponent can special summon one monster with the same name from their extra deck. Now you might have heard somewhere in that effect about adding a card called Harmonic Synchro Fusion. What's that I hear you ask? Well, it's actually a really good card for this archetype. It too made its debut in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 anime, wielded by Sergei himself. This card has a really unique ability. It fuses and synchros with two monsters simultaneously. In the anime, this ability is portrayed as the monsters splitting themselves into two as the double synchro fusion occurs. In the real world, harmonic synchro fusion's effect is send one tuna and one non-tuna from your face-up field to the graveyard. Special summon both of the following monsters from your extra deck. One Synchro Monster that could be Synchro Summoned using just those two monsters that are now in the grave. One Fusion Monster that could be Fusion Summoned using just those two monsters now in the grave. Also, you cannot Special Summon from the extra deck the turn you activate this effect, except by Fusion or Synchro Summoning. If you wonder why the new cards specifically support Synchro and Fusion Monsters, it's because obviously the original Earthbound Immortals came out during the Synchro era, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D, so that's where Synchro comes from. Sergei, he worked for the Fusion Dimension in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 anime, so that's where the Fusion influence comes in. And also in that anime as well, his character appeared in the Synchro universe, so he's also using Synchro cards, so it's Synchro Fusion. Fun fact if you didn't know. And just before we slip into these fusion synchro monsters, you can make the fusion monsters as well with the in archetype fusion card, Earthbound Fusion. You can only activate this card during the main phase unless a card is in a field zone. Fusion summon one dark fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. During your main phase, if a card is in a field zone, you can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon one earthbound monster from your hand or grave. Also, you cannot special summon from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except fusion or synchro monsters. So with either of those cards, you can make some of the brand new servant earthbound monsters, which keep in mind, they work really well in pairs, which is why harmonic synchro fusion exists in the first place. You always want to try and get out the pair of fusion and synchro monsters together at the same time since their effects complement each other. For example, Earthbound Servant Geo Gremlin. One dark tuna plus one non-tuna monster. Its effect is during the main phase. Quick effect, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls. Your opponent chooses one of these effects to apply. Destroy that monster. Gain life points equal to that monster's attack. During the battle phase, quick effect, you can fusion summon one Earthbound Fusion Monster from your extra deck by banishing its materials from your hand, field, or grave. Its paired monster is Earthbound Servant Geo Gremlina. Requires one Earthbound Monster and one Dark Monster. This card is special summon. You can add one Earthbound Monster from your deck to your hand. You can target one Dark Synchro Monster you control. It can attack directly this turn. If a monster your opponent controls is destroyed by an Earthbound card effect, you can target one of those destroyed monsters, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. This monster can give the other Earthbound Monster the ability to attack directly, just like the originals. It can also, if the opponent chooses for their monster to be destroyed, the other one will get an effect that causes them to take massive damage, so it kind of incentivizes them to instead go for the gain life points, which I guess makes you stronger, but you'd rather whittle down their life points, I guess. The other Earthbound Servant pair is Earthbound Servant Geo Griffin. It requires one Dark Tuna and one Non Tuna Monster. Its effect is Quick Effect. You can special summon one Earthbound Monster from your graveyard in defense, except itself. Also, you cannot special summon from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except Fusion or Synchro Monsters. If this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can destroy one card on the field. Then inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each Earthbound Monster with a different name in your field and graveyard. Its pair is Earthbound Servant Geo Kraken. Requires two Earthbound Monsters. If this card is special summoned, you can add one field spell from your deck or graveyard to your hand. If a monster is special summoned from your opponent's extra deck, except during the damage step, you can destroy as many monsters your opponent controls as possible that were special summoned this turn. And if you do, inflict 800 damage to your opponent for each destroyed monster. 
Now these two don't work as symbiotically as the other two, but in the anime they actually did. They had different effects and they worked really well together. So it's just a little bit different here. There is one more Earthbound servant, and it is the true boss monster of the archetype. It is made by merging one of the Earthbound fusions with one of the Earthbound synchros. By doing so, you get Earthbound servant Geo Grasher. It must be fusion summoned. At the start of the damage step, if this card battles a monster, change that monster's attack and defense to zero. If a monster in your opponent's possession is destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls. If this face-up card leaves the field because of an opponent's card, you can special summon one Earthbound monster from your deck or extra deck. What's cool about this monster is you can actually, when this monster dies, you can float into one of the original Earthbound Immortal monsters. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. So with that, that's all the monsters. But the cool thing about an Earthbound deck is they have a ton of support cards. Some of them I wouldn't recommend you play. They're very niche. If they require you to have an Earthbound Immortal on the field, I probably wouldn't put it in your deck. But if it's just an Earthbound monster in general, that's probably fine. So let's take a look at them. Starting with, of course, the field spells. Earthbound Prison. When this card is activated, you can target one effect monster your opponent controls. This card gains this effect. While this card is in the field zone, negate the effects of that face-up effect monster while it's on the field. During your main phase, you can normal summon one Earthbound monster in addition to your normal summon or set. If this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card effect and you have an Earthbound monster in your field or graveyard, halve your opponent's life points. And if you do, negate the effects of all face-up cards your opponent currently controls until the end of this turn. Sergei used this card in the anime to trap Yuzu so she couldn't escape. The other field spell is Earthbound Geoglyph. While any level 10 monsters are on the field, neither player can target this card with card effects. Also, it can be destroyed by card effects. You can treat one synchro monster as two tributes for the tribute summon of an earthbound immortal monster. If a synchro monster is special summoned, you can add one earthbound immortal spell and trap from your deck to your hand. Geoglyph is obviously a, a reference to the Nazca lines that appear in everything. In the anime, when people would fight against the dark signers and they summon the earthbound immortals, the racetrack that they're on or wherever they're dueling, they're really like an outline of the Nazca lines. They have to follow that round and that'll become the track. It was kind of cool, but that, that's what this is, by the way. Earthbound Immortal Revival. Discard one card, target one Earthbound Immortal monster and one field spell in your graveyard. Add those targets to your hand. Earthbound Whirlwind. If you control an Earthbound Immortal, destroy all spell and traps your opponent controls. Call of the Earthbound. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you choose the attack target. Earthbound Release, when a level 6 or higher monster is normal or special summoned, tribute one level 10 Earthbound monster, destroy as many monsters your opponent controls as possible, and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the combined original attack of those destroyed monsters. Earthbound Wave, when your opponent activates a spell or trap card while you control an Earthbound Immortal monster, negate the activation if you do destroy it. Offerings to the Immortals, when your opponent's monster declares a direct attack while you have 3000 or less life points, negate the attack and if you do, special summon two ceremonial tokens and if you do that, add one Earthbound Immortal card from your deck to your hand. Ceremonial tokens cannot be tributed except for the tribute summon of an Earthbound Immortal monster and cannot be used as a synchro material. Revival of the Immortals. Target one Earthbound Immortal monster in your graveyard, special summon it but it cannot declare an attack this turn. Also, your opponent takes no battle damage from attacks involving it. Roar of the Earthbound Immortal. Once per turn, if an opponent's monster declares an attack, target the attacking monster, destroy that target, and if you do, inflict damage to an opponent equal to half the destroyed monster's attack. You must control an Earthbound Immortal monster with attack higher than the attack of the attacking monster to activate and to resolve this effect. Again, just a reminder, please don't play any of the Earthbound Immortal required to be on the field cards if you can. Ultimate Earthbound Immortal. If a normal summon set Earthbound Immortal monster is on the field, you can target one face-up monster on the field, destroy it. Earthbound Resonance. If a monster special summon from the extra deck is destroyed by card effect, you can target one of them. Each player takes damage equal to half the attack it had on the field. When your Dark Synchro monster special summon from the extra deck is targeted for an attack, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. Zoma the Earthbound Spirit. Special summon this card as an effect monster with this effect. Monsters your opponent controls that can attack must attack this card. If this card special summoned by this card's effect is destroyed by an opponent's attacking monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to double the original attack of the monster that destroyed it, with a maximum of 3,000. 
Zoma the Earth and Spirit, by the way, is actually based on another card called Zoma the Spirit. And last but certainly not least, we have one out of archetype Earthbound support synchro monster, which Callan Kessler used. It was 100 Eyes Dragon. Basically, if it was destroyed, it could add an Earthbound Immortal monster to the hand. So it was like the, the mini boss before revealing the final boss. Basically. And with that, that is the Earthbound Immortal archetype and the new Earthbound cards done. Let me know what you think about an Earthbound deck in modern day. Do you think they're good or do you still think they need a little bit more support? Let me know in the comments. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. Catch you later. Bye, everyone.